that was expensive. And there are ones for like 30 chaos. But this is pretty good rolled. 39 max, 30 min. So load it up. 360, no scope. 360. Uh. I missed. Fuck. <laughs> Yo, why is this guy so big? He's huge! Iris. Are you making monies? How much is that? 80, 84, 87? Nice. First swing of the league, okay? First swing of the league. The fortunate. Is that is that good? Of chaos. Alright boys, there it is. The nameless seer. You're gonna be headhunter or mage blood. Diala? Yo! <laughs> One percent chance to drop an additional divine orb. Yo! It's good! So, we need to up the modifier. 2% chance. Let's go. Alright. 20 divines, dude. Easy. You guys ready? Oh! What is this? Yo! Wait, divine orb. I can't click it. Fuck over, you stupid leak mechanic. Yo! Easy. There is one more divine in here, I swear. Fuck! Okay. No more divines, but hey! More divines! Nola Stone was red. I load up. Wait, is that? I was just about to load up behind the pillar and then dash forward and shoot, but the fucker died instead. Okay. Wait, are we killing him before? Yo, that would be insane. Probably goes in immune or some shit, right? Actually, dude, I killed him before he before one time intermission. Are we ready for the next nameless seer? The fuck is he shit? Wait, he's almost dead. An arrow to the knee. I don't even die. Wow, oh, greaves, dude. Booties. Cool guys, don't look at explosions. Die! Die! My bleaches run out. Citadel bow. Nice, dude. Look at the bow. Yo, it's insane. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video today. Update on the Bleed Bow Gladiator, the 324 uh, Necropolis League, and uh, things are going way better than actually expected. So, we're currently level 90. The goal for today was kind of like getting the first 50 maps going, thinking about white yellow tier maps, but actually, we did our first two Void Stones today, and we already uh, were finishing a couple of tier 16 uh, corrupted maps. So, we're currently on 70, uh, 73 of 115 completion. And uh, there is no stopping right now. It is it is so much fun just to pop in the maps uh, and just run around on the bleed bow glad and just uh, have fun, um, yeah, killing stuff basically. So um, where do we start this entire thing? I would say let's run a map showcase so you see how it's currently looking like. I'm actually thinking about doing um, my first guardian here. Okay, that's physical reflect. Can we can we actually fix that real quick? Uh, we have, do we have vals? We have a couple vals. It is a cold river. We haven't finished that yet, so... Okay, that is... Okay, this is a bit shitty. 
Avoid elemental ailments, fizzes extra, ignite freeze, chill, shock, damage, damage, yeah, corrupted. And it's a lot easier, I guess. But yeah, this is how we do maps, corrupt it, and uh, go for it. So, uh, when we talk about the leak mechanic, what I usually do is, um, once you get into maps, you always have like a bunch of like good uh, upsides and downsides. And I actually had today one with a divine orb, so... Um, I had a 1% chance to drop a Divine Orb um, from a certain monster, and I upgraded here. It's like two icons. One is the one um, that says, like, plus or minus one modifier. The other one is more or less pack size. So you want to, like, um, get this on a higher tier if it's good, right? On the fusing side of things, like, I don't really mind it too much. A couple of fusings, a couple of rares. We just enter it and uh, just give it a shot, right? This is actually the first Elder Guardian uh, that I'm uh, trying to. So I haven't really got anything here. Uh, we also gonna have a uh, map completion, so this is like the untold truth about the current build in its current state. And I did actually quite a bunch of like optimizations, um, because I'm not running the auras that I actually plan to do. What am I talking about? I'm currently running uh, Blood and Sand, Determination, Purity of Elements, instead of, um, what is it, like Malevolence or Pride or War Banner and those kind of things. And the first thing that I want to quickly mention before people go wild, yes, I'm running Blood and Sand. Yes, it does absolutely nothing for me because it's for melee skills, okay? What the gem does um, is melee skills deal more damage. Melee skills have whatever, you know? So I would use Flesh and Stone, but I don't have the Mana Reservation. I do not have the Charisma Anointment. I do not have an Enlightened Gem. So why still using Blood and Sand? And it's simple. Um, usually it would be Flesh and Stone, but it's a 25% Mana Reservation Aura. This one is only 10%, and all I'm doing with it is getting myself into Blood Stance or, um, like, Blood Stance or Sand Stance to get the Arena Challenger charges. This is it, okay? There is no benefit what I have, because I already know that people are gonna ask me, uh, why would I run Blood and Sand on the bow build? It doesn't really make sense. The only sense is, I can switch stances for less, um, Mana Reservation than Flesh and Stone is. Flesh and Stone will have more benefits overall, but as I said. Um, then Purity of Elements. I am actually res overcapped. I already made the second um, gear overhaul, and I'm now res capped without Purity of Elements, but I'm still using it because I just hate it to not be ailment immune. You know, all these like freeze, shock, ignite, brittle, sap, scorch kind of like stuff, you know. I hate this so much, especially on League Start. And I haven't really figured out a way, uh, in a budget sense, uh, how I can do that. It will most likely be a Storm Shroud Jewel, unless we go for, um, what is it, Spell Suppression? Then it would be the Spell Suppression one, what is it called, uh, Ancestral Vision or something like that. Um, but I think there has been some new news. So, there are new boots on the market, at least not on the market probably. I think they dropped from Uber Cyrus or something. It is definitely new boots that got released this league, and this is gonna be kind of a game changer for Bleepo, and it's it's actually gonna be amazing. I can show you the boots later on, but essentially what they do, if you are affected by an elemental ailment, nearby enemies, or not nearby, like, um, enemies in my presence count as moving. So, what does that basically mean? Actually, pretty simple. We are using Ensnaring Arrow, right? Um, the, the way bleed works is simple. If a monster is bleeding and it is moving, it takes 270% more damage. So you always want to make sure um, that monsters are actually moving. In a mapping scenario, it's not a problem. You shoot your arrows, monsters are always walking towards you. They get the extra damage and that's about it. But there are stationary monsters uh, like bosses, totems, whatever kind of shit. Um, like this guy here, if he doesn't move, he doesn't get the extra damage. That's why we're using ensnaring arrow. What the ensnaring arrow is doing is basically once the, the enemy is ensnared, um, it counts as moving even though it's not moving. That means that it's, it's taking the extra damage. So with the new boots, what it basically does is you don't need ensnaring arrow anymore. Means we can save up probably like a couple uh, gem slots. At the moment I'm playing it with a ballista totem here. Just to uh, apply this effect, right? And if monsters nearby or in my presence have this modifier, man, this is gonna make... A lot of a difference. On top of that, these boots actually do have faster bleed and I think uh, increased uh, bleed duration or something like that. So, it is actually DPS boots. Another thing that I've seen today, and I actually bought a new pair of gloves today for 3 Chaos, um, bleeding you inflict deals damage 20% faster. There is actually 
uh, haunted modifiers from the Necropolis um, crafting thingy, so you get now bleed faster on your gloves, which is also another DPS increase that didn't exist before. So honestly, I think bleed bow is gonna turn out a lot better, a lot stronger than I actually thought it's gonna be, and this is kind of like, kind of like hyping me up to be honest. And on top of that. I was actually lucky, I found the Nameless Seer a couple of times today and I made like 10 divines of the Nameless Seer plus the Divine Orb mod and all of a sudden I was sitting there with a couple divines and I didn't even know what to do but basically on the gearing part I want to touch on a little bit later, let's focus on my first Guardian of this league. So let's put down the totems, Snipe is still like loading up slowly but uh, as soon as it exits we shoot and, um, and we missed I think, I don't know. Is it immune to bleeding? No, I don't think. Oh, he just had like a fuck ton of extra energy shield. But yeah, this is the thing early on. The game is hard, you know? Um, with all these like extra modifiers that the leak mechanic is giving and stuff, it is definitely hard, especially early on. You don't have like a double six link and stuff. And currently I'm playing the puncture on a five link and my split air on a six link. A six link. Reason for that is pretty simple. Um, I usually don't really puncture too often. I mean, here I kind of have to. I'm just like kind of moving around to dodge that shit. So let's see if we can... Oh, it's actually Maven watched as well. I don't want to get the bleed off. One thing that is actually quite nice to have, because we all gonna agree puncture without attack speed is annoying to play and is uh, clunky. I agree on that, you know? But what you can do, especially when there is monsters, you can always start loading up your puncture. And when it hits uh, six or seven stacks and there is like a monster nearby, you can still dash around and dodge certain monsters and then just inflict your massive snipe and this is gonna help a lot like here i just dash and then release the arrow and hopefully i hit but the good thing about puncture is it does have quite some duration so holy moly dude guys hitting a lot but it's dead okay so that was my first first uh yeah guardian of the league so we should be able to got uh, to get the uh, next um favorite map slot and as i said um, for me, it's personally, I am I never try to sell somebody my build. All I'm doing is basically showcase the build, how it actually is without any fakes or anything. Uh, and then people can decide for themselves if they think this is actually good or bad or whatever, right? There's like no point for me to, to fake anything. All right, let's talk about a little bit about the gear and, and how things happen. So basically, you have to imagine... Um, after the Nameless Seer, the first one gave me a Harry's Ire that I sold for five Divines. Then I got another Nameless Seer for, um, that got me um, a Diala that I 5 linked and that sold for 2 Divines. Then I had the leak mechanic, when you just enter the map there is like a chance to uh, drop a Divine Orb. I got this to tier 2 and I got 4 Divine Orb out of that. So all of a sudden I was left in my staff with 10 Divines and I, I was like, what am I doing now, right? So what I did is I bought this chest here that is just like Dexterity, Life and, and Resistance for 75 Chaos to get my early 6 link going. I think 75 chaos for this chest um, is actually pretty cheap, I would say. Um, like a divine, I, I don't know what a divine is currently going for, I guess like 90 chaos or something. So it was less than a divine basically for my 6 link and it had all the stats that I needed. Obviously it doesn't have spell suppression, but you know, for the beginning that was actually really, really good. I mean, it's a shaper base, like whatever. All I care is like armor evasion because um, if you have an armor evasion base, you're gonna have an easy time uh, coloring your stuff in red and green and since we don't really need blue gems I have your Puri of Elements and Frost Blink. These are my only two gems. I think at some point when I get ailment immunity I'm probably gonna swap out Puri of Elements for Malevolence but the question is always how am I gonna sustain the mana? As I said at the moment Blood and Sand, Determination, Puri of Elements those are my three hours that I'm running. I would like to have War Banner, I would like to have Purity of um the Herald of Purity, I would like to have Pride or Malevolence or Haste or all these kind of things. So how do I get the all of these going? Probably with an Owl's Uprising with my, uh, where one of the Auras doesn't cost any mana. With the Charisma uh, and Chant that is, uh, is like two Golden Oils and an Opalescent Oil. So it's also like not really too cheap. It's like 50, 60 Chaos right now. Um, then an Enlightened Level 4 and there's currently only one on the market for 11 Divine. So everything is out of reach. So... I'm fine though because I can clear the tier 60 maps you already saw. I just killed um, a corrupted Maven Watched Elder Guardian. So the progression is there. It's, it's just going to get a lot better. So what did I do with the 10 Divines though? Um, I decided to actually buy the Forbidden Flame Flash combination um, for Fortitude. So there is like multiple ways to think about stuff. 
honestly, people, at least like the majority of people want to say, hey, I want to get a six link early on. I want to get um, an, a high physical DPS bow. And mine currently has 500 uh, DPS, 555 with attack speed. So it's like 500 flat. So it is fair enough to have a 500 PDPS bow and pretty much probably encounter uh, like kill all the pinnacle bosses in the game, right? Obviously, you can get like a lot higher and a lot stronger, but it's like for later. So what I was thinking is, let me, in I'm, I'm going to invest into stuff that um, people usually don't do. We can argue if it's day one or if it's day two. It's like 20, or like 30 hours after leak start. And I said, all of a sudden I have 10 divines. I'm going to just go ahead and start buying Forbidden Flame Flash because I know these things going to go more expensive. What I paid for them is uh, two divines for the blue one and four divines for the red one. Let's see the price checks. I have no idea. There's one for four divines and one for five. So they're going a little bit up here, but usually on day one, people are not really caring too much about Forbidden Flame Flash combinations. That's why I kind of know it's a, a good investment the same way as I bought this Rizladr's Coil for 40 Chaos. It was like the first item that I bought today uh, early in the morning. Because Rizladr's Coil... Might be just the best in slot uh, thing that I can get. And at this point, I had 43 chaos on my stash. And I bought this for 40 because it's almost perfect rolled. So I said, like, you know what? I don't think that I'm going to replace this belt until, I don't know, uber bosses or something like that. Even then. So it was a good investment. Uh, same with the Forbidden Flame Flash. What I care about right now is tankiness. I want to be tanky. I want to run all the eight modded corrupted maps when I corrupt them, um, what can happen basically, right? I want to clear my Atlas and I think I'm going to have plenty of damage. At the moment, on a six link snipe, I think that was the six, uh, six link one where I just did my Voidstone um, stuff, you know? So I'm running three mil DPS on bleed if we have a good bleed roll. And that is fair enough to do pretty much a lot of the content and we're still in the progressing part right there is no awakened gems yet my support gems don't have quality but what i did i invested a couple chaos into a, a 20 percent main skill gems main skill gems snipe puncture split arrow you know split arrow for example gets four additional projectiles with quality and a level 120 um split arrow was one chaos puncture one chaos snipe two chaos so i just took like 10 chaos and just upgraded all my, my main skill gems with quality because the vendor recipe doesn't work anymore. So that's actually quite nice to get some early uh, power with the clearing for additional arrows. The, the puncture uh, quality gives you actually dot multi more damage with bleeding. So that's also very, very nice. And as, as I said, like for one chaos or two chaos investment early on, 20% more damage with bleeding is actually really, really good. Other than that, the rest of the gear is pretty much life resistance, life resistance movement speed here, life resistance, intelligence here. Um, we have dot multi, life, flat, fizz, which is also pretty nice, and dex intelligence. Your kind of dex intelligence starts to remember you have the 30 points over here. I took them like forever. And then in the end of the day, when I made my second gear overhaul, where I just like spend a certain amount of chaos for every single item. Um... Then I just get more stats like here, the dex intelligence, so I could um, save two skill points over here and move them to somewhere else. Another thing that I added here that I don't have in my uh, early planner build is the live regen. So I hate builds that don't have recovery and early on this like regen 50 life per second um, is quite helpful. So I'm currently on like 400 life per second without vitality. It is okay it is better than nothing right i don't want to like end up just because i i get damaged and i just don't have the recovery so i'm having leech and i'm having life region this kind of helps super nice with labyrinth traps and all these kind of things um so yeah i can definitely recommend that other than that i bought my first large cluster jewel that was one and a half divines basically with um battle hardened mastery fundamentals and force multiplier i definitely want to have a second one but this was like in the same breath when i bought the forbidden flame flesh so this entire package was like uh, seven divines basically and then i have like three divines left and with the 150 chaos or whatever i had about the chest and the better bow and this bow actually was 25 chaos that i then afterwards five linked myself it's like a 500 uh, PDPS bow, 25C. This one is still like a 2 Chaos Quiver that I bought super early on. This one with 35 Chaos. The boots was like one of the very last pieces that I've um, bought with just like uh, movement speed, life, res, some region. As I said before, region is always nice to have. And they were 45 Chaos. The belt, 40 Chaos. These gloves, actually 3 Chaos. I think nobody has that on the radar to have the bleed. You inflict deals damage faster. So this like has life, flat fist. Um, faster bleed and lightning res. I mean, there, 
I don't need anything more for leak start uh, than that, right? Obviously, later on with like fractured bases and whatnot, uh, it's gonna look a, a, a way lot different. My ring still the same 1C crab ring that I bought uh, to, like 14 hours ago. So there is definitely a lot of room uh, to upgrade. The helm was also like one chaos. So I started spending like a 20, 30 chaos on these uh, couple of pieces. And some of them are still like 1-2C bases. So there's lots of improvements. So the question is, what am I going to do next? I think damage wise, obviously the six link bow would be nice. But obviously that's probably going to be like five, six, seven divines. Maybe more, maybe less. Maybe link it yourself if you get a good base. It's like, I don't know yet. I have them on life search. I think I have enough damage so far. So I don't feel the need to upgrade it. That's why I'm like just sitting on my divines. But I think... I think I'm actually going to buy Awakened Gems next. Because this is also like something that people don't have on their radar. Like on day one or two to buy Awakened Gems. So the way I, I try to do it right now. Since I got like quite a bit of currency early on. I'm just going to buy all these mandatory items that I'm going to have later on anyways. And rare items specifically. Going to get cheaper over time. While something like Forbidden Flame Flash, Awakened Gems and stuff like that is going to get up in price. So that's why I'm buying the, the more expensive stuff early on make it cheaper overall in like a day or two um then the rear items are going to be uh, also like cheaper when i before i'm switching uh, around here right so good i think um there is nothing too much to talk about i think let's go over the mtx real quick so we have that covered uh, automating death notch bow then we have the shattering ruby weapon effect coming from the new mystery boxes this is basically the, the red shatter effect that you saw in the showcase uh, then we have Legion Commander back attachment, Legion um, Commander helmet, Dragon Hunter set with gloves, boots, uh, and uh, the quiver basically. Uh, all flasks disabled, and that is pretty much it. I'm kind of wondering why there is a Forbidden Flame Flash over here. Maybe it's just like planned for a new MTX. That's kind of weird. I don't want, other than that, we have the Demonic Split Arrow effect, and the rest is pretty much disabled um, as far as I can tell. Good. Uh, Pound of Building link is in the description below with my current tree. Like, everything set up the way I killed the first two uh, pinnacle bosses, if you want to take a glance. And then I would say that is it for this kind of update video. And, um, yeah, tomorrow I definitely want to push in the best case scenario, if I get lucky and just, like, have a good run like today, uh, maybe I'm able to do the enter atlas clear tomorrow if that is the case and this was actually my fastest leak start even though i'm actually chilling i was doing highest contracts uh, i was doing some delve i was doing side content i was clearing the temple when i had it open so i'm absolutely not stressing myself whatsoever but still just like without caring about anything i i kind of make like faster progress uh, than anything else from the atlas tree it's pretty much the one that i linked so i'm not going to go into detail please watch my youtube video explaining this atlas tree um where I go over why do I take certain notes, why Nico, uh, why Yoon, why Kirok, and so on. Um, so you get a better understanding how am I sustaining all my maps or even like getting all my maps and so on. All right, I think that's enough for this uh, update video. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.